good day students today we shall look into a few solved problems in interference of light by division of amplitude first question a non reflecting film of refractive index mu f is coated on a glass having refractive index mu g show that mu f is equal to square root of mu g into mu a where mu a is the refractive index of air so here the question is how do we calculate the refractive index of the non reflecting film which is coated as an anti reflecting layer upon a glass surface okay so how do we selectively choose a material so for that let us assume that light falls on such a medium so the light ray 1 is falling on this non reflecting film and we have a reflected component ray 2 and a transmitted component ray 3 now the ray 3 when it falls upon the glass surface it again divides into two the reflective component ray 4 and transmitted component ray 5 okay now from the ray 4 we have the transmitted component ray 6 now in order for this film to be the non reflective film the rays 2 and 6 should interfere destructively such that there is no reflection okay so it has to obey the condition for destructive interference and in order to have complete destructive interference the amplitudes of these two rays must be equal so that is where we begin this derivation let the first ray be represented as a where a is the amplitude of this incident light ray okay now the second ray is the reflected component of the first ray so for that i am going to use the simple the reflection coefficient the amplitude of reflection coefficient upon the first ray that is the reflection coefficient on the film right upon the incident light the third ray can be represented as the amplitude of the transmission coefficient on the film upon the first ray right now the fourth ray can be represented as the amplitude of the reflection coefficient on glass surface acting upon the third ray that is tf a and the fifth ray can be represented as amplitude of the transmission coefficient on the glass surface acting upon the third ray that is tf a right finally the sixth ray can be represented as amplitude of the transmission coefficient on air surface right it is emerging from the film to the air so on the air surface that is acting upon the fourth ray that is rg tf a okay so i have represented each ray in terms of the amplitude of reflection or transmission here i have used uh, several r and t terms let us write it down r f can be written as the amplitude of the reflection coefficient on the non reflecting film that is usually represented as mu1 minus mu2 divided by mu1 plus mu2 so here mu1 is air so mu a mu2 is film so mu a minus mu f divided by mu a plus mu f right now we have tf it is usually the amplitude of the transmission coefficient on the film surface given by 2 mu1 is here mu a 
divided by mu1 plus mu2 that is mu a plus mu f okay then the next coefficient was rg it is the amplitude of the reflection coefficient on the glass surface okay so here mu1 will be the film a refractive index of the film and mu2 will be the index of glass so we have mu f minus mu g divided by mu f plus mu g next we have the amplitude of the transmission coefficient on the glass surface that is given as 2 mu 1 divided by mu 1 plus mu 2 that is 2 mu f divided by mu f plus mu g next we have the amplitude of transmission coefficient on air right so that is given as here the first medium will be the film and the second medium will be the air hence we get 2 times mu f divided by mu f plus mu a okay so we have defined all the rays and all the coefficients now in order to get destructive interference by the second and the sixth rays okay so to serve the purpose of the non reflective film the second ray should cancel out the sixth ray for that its amplitudes must be equal here it implies that the amplitude of this second ray and the amplitude of the sixth ray must be equal right hence we get r f a is equal to t a r g t f a okay let's cancel out this amplitude a and rewrite these terms in turn, uh, the order of refractive indices so we get r f is equal to mu a minus mu f divided by mu a plus mu f this is equal to t a is written as twice mu f divided by mu a plus mu f into r g that is mu f minus mu g divided by mu f plus mu g right into t f t f can be written as twice mu a divided by mu a plus mu f now here we have this term 4 times mu a mu f divided by mu a plus mu f the whole square into mu f minus mu g divided by mu f plus mu g now this term can be approximated to 1 because in the numerator we have mu a into mu f it 4 that is 4 times mu a mu f denominator we have mu a square plus 2 mu a mu f plus mu f square here mu a square can be written as mu a mu f and mu f square can be written as mu a mu f hence this denominator can be approximated to 4 times mu a mu f okay thus this term can be neglected so finally we get mu a minus mu f right into this term goes to the other side mu f plus mu g is equal to mu f minus mu g into mu a plus mu f okay now taking the products we can write 
mu a mu f plus mu a mu g minus mu f square minus mu f mu g is equal to mu f mu a plus mu f square minus mu a mu g minus mu f mu g right now this term cancels out um mu a mu f term also cancels out so the remaining terms can be written together as 2 mu f square is equal to 2 mu a mu g this implies mu f is equal to square root of mu a mu g okay now let's move on to the second question a light of wavelength 6000 angstrom is falling on a glass plate what is the refractive index and minimum coating thickness for minimum reflectivity so again we have an anti reflecting coating ar coating on a glass plate so the question is what is the minimum thickness of the ar coating for a given wavelength on a glass plate okay now the given values are wavelength 6000 into 10 raised to minus 10 meters that is angstrom light is falling on a glass plate hence refractive index of glass plate is 1.5 mu g is 1.5 it is falling from air right so refractive index of air is 1 and uh, the refractive index of film will thus be square root of 1.5 into 1 right so that is equal to 1.225 okay now by theory we have the thickness of a non-reflecting film should be lambda divided by 4 times mu f that is 6000 into 10 raised to minus 10 divided by 4 into 1.225 that is given as 1.2245 into 10 raised to minus 7 meters so the thickness of this ar coating should be uh, if we speak in terms of micrometers 10 raised to minus 6 we can say t should be equal to 0 0.122 microns now to the next question the third question is in a wedge shaped film the distance between successive fringes is measured to be 1.25 millimeters hence the fringe width is given right so fringe width beta is given as 1.25 millimeters into 10 raised to minus 3 meters okay the angle of the wedge is 40 seconds okay so the angle theta is given as 40 seconds that is 0 degree 0 minute 40 arc seconds it should be converted to the SI unit. So to convert this into degrees initially, I have 40 should be divided by 60 mm, minutes to 60 seconds. Okay, now this is in degrees. Now to convert it into radian, we have into pi by 180. So this is the answer in radians and that can be calculated as 0 
194 into 10 raised to minus 3 radians. Now the question is calculate the wavelength of light used if refractive index of the wedge-shaped film is 1.4. By theory, we have the relation beta is equal to lambda divided by 2 mu theta. Okay, so here lambda is to be calculated, beta is given, mu is given, and theta is given. Hence, we can write lambda is equal to 2 mu theta into beta. Substituting the values here, you get 2 into 1.4 into 0 0.194 into 10 raised to minus 3 into 1.25 into 10 raised to minus 3. The wavelength of the light source is calculated to be, you can do this calculations, you may pause the video, do the calculations and then continue. The wavelength is thus obtained as 6790 into 10 raised to minus 10 meters. That is 6790 angstrom units. Moving on to the next question. A wedge-shaped film, air film, is illuminated with a light of wavelength 4000 angstrom. So given values are the refractive index of this film is given so it's just 1. And the wavelength of the light source is given. It is 4000 angstrom, 10 raised to minus 10 meters. Now, there are 15 fringes per centimeter. You have to calculate the angle of the wedge. Assume normal incidence. So, by theory, we have this relation. Beta is equal to lambda divided by 2 mu theta, right? Lambda is given, mu is given, we need to calculate theta. For that, beta should be known. Now, beta is given here in terms of this sentence. There are 15 fringes per centimeter. That means in one centimeter, we have 15 fringes. In terms of meters, SI units, it will be in 10 raised to minus 2 meters, you have 15 fringes. So for one fringe, you can find it in a distance of one fringe will use a space of 10 raised to minus 2 meters divided by 15, right? Okay, so the distance of one, one fringe is called its fringe width, beta. Hence, we can calculate the angle of wedge theta as lambda divided by 2 mu beta. Substituting, we get 4000 into 10 raised to minus 10 divided by 2 into 1 into 10 raised to minus 2 by 15. You may do the calculations by pausing the video. You will thus get 3 into 10 raised to minus 4 radians. This is a very small angle. Now let us move on to the next question. Two plane glass surfaces in contact along one edge are separated at the opposite edge by a thin wire. If 20 fringes are observed between these edges in sodium light at normal incidence, what is the thickness of the wire? Now, given value is wavelength, lambda is equal to 5890 angstrom. So, in this problem, let me assume this air wedge, right? Two plane glass surfaces are in contact, but at one edge, it is separated by a thin wire. Now, it is said that we have 20 fringes between these edges. So, from this end to this end, 
the complete length i have 20 fringes okay so what we use is here if we see a dark fringe at this point and if we see a dark fringe at this point we count the number of fringes and here it is given as 20 now the condition for destructive interference is given as 2 mu t is equal to n lambda under normal incidence okay so here we have 2 mu t t is the distance between these two glass plates at the nth fringe this is the nth fringe right okay so here i can write t is equal to n lambda divided by 2 mu that is here the nth fringe is 20th fringe 20 into lambda is the wavelength of the sodium vapor lamp 5890 into 10 raised to minus 10 divided by 2 into 1. So this can be calculated as 5.89 into 10 raised to minus 6 meters. That is thickness of the wire is 5.89 micrometers. Now the next question, a glass wedge of angle 0 0.01 radian is illuminated by monochromatic light of wavelength 6000 angstrom falling normally on it. At what distance from the edge of the wedge will the 10th fringe be observed by reflected light? Okay. Now here we have a glass wedge of angle theta is given 0 0.01 radians. It is illuminated by light of wavelength 6000 into 10 raised to minus 10 meters. Light is falling normally on it. Now I need to find the distance of the 10th fringe. So the value of n is 10. 10th fringe from this point of contact. Okay, so let me define that as xn or x10. Now, in the theory of uh, air wedge, we had seen that 2 mu xn tan theta is equal to n lambda. Now, when theta is very small, they can approximate it as 2 mu xn theta is equal to n lambda. Thus, for this question, xn can be written as n lambda divided by 2 mu theta. Here n is given, lambda is given, theta is given and mu is the refractive index of the medium. That is, here mu is equal to 1, the index of refractive index of air. So substituting the values here, I get n is equal to 10 into 6000 into 10 raised to minus 10 in divided by 2 into 1 into 0 0.01. This can be calculated as 3 millimeters. So we have done a few problems related to air wedge. Kindly go through and learn well. Thank you.